Do you guys want some mushroom totems? Because I want some mushroom totems. So today we're going to cover off making some oyster, shiitake and turkey tail totems. But before you guys rush headlong into it and fail miserably like I did on my first time, we'll cover off a few points in the, um, in the classroom. So let's uh, head in there now. Welcome to the classroom. I'm your teacher for today, Tom Brain, and we're going to look at making mushroom totems. Now to make mushroom totems we need three things. We need a shady and damp spot. We need hardwood logs. And we need mushroom spawn. So we'll get that together and we'll go make some totems. So this is the patch I've chosen for my mushroom totems. Now it doesn't get much sun during the day, it might get a little patch in the morning, um, but the rest of the day the sun's actually um, shaded by the house here. Um, it's also got these rose bushes you can see, which in summer they'll, um, they'll blossom out with a bit, of, um, a bit of foliage which will provide a little bit more shade. Um, ideally you want to have more shade than this, but on my property I simply don't have that option, so here's good. I'm going to have to trim all these weeds back here and I'll get this back to the soil so we've got a good um, base for our totems to go in. I'm also going to set up a little bit of irrigation to keep the totems wet during the dry summers we get here. So I've cleared away some of the weeds um, and you can see there's kind of a few sort of whole areas I've made around here and we're going to put um, a totem in each one. We're still going to bury the bottom of the log a few inches in the soil just because it's going to suck some of that uh, moisture out of the soil and, and help keep the log uh, hydrated. So we've got the spot out the back where we're going to stick our totems. Um, now we'll have a look at the wood I've selected to make them out of. Um, there's a few considerations you have to take into account when you um, select your wood, um, we'll run over those now so you can um, help you guys pick out the best wood that will give you the most amount of mushrooms. So these are the cuts of wood I have here for my um, totems. Now this is actually poplar. Now poplar is good for, um, I think it's alright for oyster and turkey tail, but I heard it's not as great for shiitake, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. Now some of the considerations you want to take into when you're buying wood, is you want to make sure the wood is actually um, is actually still wet. Um, to, and to get wet wood you need to make sure you, you get it when it's been cut within sort of, ideally you want it cut within the month, even cut within the week. Um, so this was cut about a week or two ago and I went and picked it up as soon as it fell to the ground and the guy who cut them down had I cut them to size. But if we look at it, um, if we look at how I've got them now, you can see each one, there's a section there, there's a section here, there's a cut, there's a section there, down to here, there's a section there and then there's the bottom section. Now what this means is that when I put the spawn, I sandwich the spawn between these levels and the spawn will, will infect the, the fresh wet wood and start moving up. But to increase that rate, I'm going to drill holes from the, from the top piece and drill holes about down that far so spawn actually falls down, sort of nearing halfway down each piece. And that will increase the rate at which the logs all get infected. Um, and it should um, give me uh, hopefully a higher amount of mushrooms sooner. And I'll do this with all of them. You can see they've all got this, this capped piece on top as well. Um, that's just to stop. If I spin that over, you can see that back side is quite wet. And that's quite wet under there. The top's been dry because it's been sitting there a few days. So that's just to keep the, try and keep the, the column of wood drier 
and so that's like a sacrificial part which are uh, sorry you keep your column of wood wetter and that's your sacrificial part so that might dry out a little bit but it's okay because right under that the spawn starts and it will start moving there down so i've got a few of these i've got one two three four five big ones and this little tiny one here um so we'll do two shiitake two oysters and um and a turkey tail on the end just for a bit of a laugh So what I'm going to do is just going to bang, take that top piece off and we're just going to bang a bunch of holes around here. So when I lie a spawn on, the spawn's going to, going to go into the holes and it's going to help inoculate um, part way down this wood quicker. Instead of the, the mycelium moving from the top and the bottom, the mycelium will have a shortcut into the, into the centre of the wood. Now you can see here the wood, the wood the mycelium really likes is actually this outer rim of the wood around here. So that's a nice soft fresh stuff and that's what the mycelium is really going to eat and it won't so much eat it will but it won't so much eat this hard old dry wood in the middle it's really going to um, consume this fast so i'm going to draw my holes down into that um really soft fleshy wood Okay, you can see there I've got six holes around it. So when we put the spawn on, I'm going to make sure the spawn, some spawn goes down all of these holes. Um, and that'll, of course, as I said, accelerate the, at the rate which the mycelium moves through the wood. Now I'm going to do it with... So, so that's one piece done. I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to do it with the next piece. I'm gonna do it with all three, all three main pieces of this, of this, um, this totem. So my uh, drill has run out of power, and um, the sun set, so we're fast losing light. So I'm gonna get inside and um, charge the batteries, and um, tomorrow morning we'll get out here and continue. Right, it's a new day. The sun's out. My drill is charged, so let's get back into our, our uh, mushroom totems, eh? So, behind me we've got my um, five totems ready to go. Um, now you see right now I'm actually in the sun, but the totems are all in the shade. So that is actually quite a shady spot right there for them. So I'm um, quite happy about that. I will, um, I will run an irrigation line along the edge, and I'll, I'll have them being irrigated as well, just to keep that um, moisture on them at all times, because it is quite dry where I live, the city I live in, it gets quite dry in summer. Um, it's, we're still in winter now, and today's going to get up to maybe 16 degrees, so it, you know, it, is, it, is, it does get warm here. Um, also, when I, when I was drilling the holes in them, you don't actually have to do that. Um, I like to do that to, to increase the speed at which the, the, the mycelium moves through the wood. Um, if you don't have a drill, don't even worry about it. Um, we'll get the spawn on them, between them, sandwich between them, without the holes, and it will still move through it, and it will still infect that wood uh, really nicely. So we'll... Um, We'll get the, these, the, the bases mounted in the soil now and then um, once they mount in I'll go select some spawn and we'll get that spawn sandwiched between them. Right, so I've got the um, base pieces of my totems um, buried in the, in the dirt now. Now they're buried about 3 inches or 10 centimetres. Um, this is for two reasons. One, it provides a, a base of stability for the totem, and two, it allows the totem to actually draw moisture up um, um, out of the ground. Now I've selected my spawn. Now I've got a, um, I've got some turkey tail here, which I'm going to grow. I've got some oyster, some grey oyster, and I've got some um, shiitake. Now this is um, my own spawn, which I produce. Um, if you're in New Zealand and you need spawn, head to www.oakenspore.co.nz. Um, I sell it all there, um, and we uh, we sterilise our spawn in a um, all-American um, 
um, autoclave, so it's all uh, very high quality. Um, so I've selected those, we've got five totems, so we're going to do two totems of shiitake, two of oyster and one of turkey tail. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll head over there now and we'll get some of these um, um, totems made up and we'll get some of the spawn um, sandwiched in between, just how we want it. Um, for st sterility purposes, obviously we're outdoors, it's not sterile, but still you should, um, you should try and make sure you, you, you keep a bit clean. So I've washed my hands really well, just to make sure there's no bacteria or anything, which I'm going to spread, because I'm going to handle this grain. So I've opened my bag of spawn, this is a shiitake, and these two here are going to be shiitake. Um, I do love the smell of, of fresh spawn when you've just opened it. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to just get a bit of spawn out, and I'm just going to pour a little bit over the tops of each one of these. And you can see as I'm pouring that, there's actually bits going down into that, into those little holes I made. And I'm just going to push this round. So those holes I drilled, there's actually bits of grain which is falling down into them nicely. And that's going to allow that, that we actually got quite a bit of spawn here, so I really, I really juice them up. Right, now we want to get our bits of wood, and with the holes facing up, we're just going to balance them on top. So that's nice there, I'm going to get on top without getting hooked in that rose bush. Just give it a nice push down. Um, I'll, just, I'll just leave that one for now, and we'll continue on this one up here. This garden I'm working in, I've actually spread a lot of I've spread a lot of um, shaggy mane spawn around it, so I'm actually hoping at some point I get some wild uh, shaggy manes growing, but I haven't seen any just yet. So we'll put the next layer on. Now you want to get these layers because they're not cut perfectly straight. Here we are. Now the next one. See, that already becomes a bit precarious. You see, it, got, it, get, it gets a bit of a wobble going on. We'll do the last bit. And this is finally, so sorry you was out of the camera shot there. So I've got the spawn at the top. That's the last layer. And we've got our cap here. So that cap's going to go on top. And so that then becomes, it basically becomes a big sandwich of wood and spawn. Now back down to this one down here, which we've done. This is going to be a shorter one. We've got heaps of spawn leaves, so I'm just going to really get that on there. Beauty. Right, now that should be enough spawn there to infect the wood, of course there, there might be contaminants like trichoderma come along and might get in there and, um, and try and grow, but we hope that there's enough mycelium in there that it can really overpower it and try and keep it out. Um, 
fungi in nature, it is always a battle between bacteria and different fungi always fighting, but basically you want to create an environment which um, gives the, the fungi you're using, the mycelium you're using, the, the best chance it's got. And for the sheer amount of uh, mycelium we're using here, and that the wood's quite fresh and hopefully shouldn't really be contaminated, um, I think our shiitake is going to um, really take to these logs quite well. What I might do, I might do also is paint a bit of paraffin, wet paraffin over this top layer, just to really seal that, um, that, that, that moisture in there a bit more. But what we'll do now is, well, um, we've done our shiitakes, we'll get in there, we'll do our oysters, and we'll do our turkey tail. So we've done that, we've got our bag of turkey tail here, it's actually growing together quite well. The turkey tail strain I have is a ferocious grower. And it came off this real pretty turkey tail I found at, 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 at another property. So that's open. Ooh, that smell. That actually smells a bit um doesn't have as strong a mycelium smell, the old turkey tail. But it's really, it's really thick with mycelium. So we'll get a nice layer on there. We'll get our logs over. And we'll get these balancing. It's almost like playing uh, Jenga. Or Tetris, I say, oh, not Tetris, Jenga. Actually, it'd be the opposite of Jenga, because we're um, building, not pulling down. Oh, that's... Look at that spawn. Get it on top. This is going to be one of my taller towers. Um, I wanted to have the bigger tower as turkey tower because I grow a lot of shiitake and oyster inside, so I want to see how much turkey tail we can get off a giant column. Right, and there we have it. So there are our three, sorry, five totems made. Turkey tail, two oysters, and two shiitakes in the corner. Um, we'll give those a few weeks, and then we'll give. I'll make a video on, of an update to just uh, show you guys how that um, mycelium is um, is spreading um, through this wood here. Um, I like to try and do my filming in 4K. We're actually in 1080p right now, but with 4K, you should be able to come in and you should be able to really see some um, some good detail um, of that mycelium moving around. With the last of my spawn here, I like to go throw it around my garden, to be honest. Um, the turkey tail will go throw and find some wood lying in the bushes and throw it around there, and the oyster as well. Just, um, you never know where you'll, um, you'll see the mushrooms pop up. Hey guys, I know I said I'm gonna irrigate it, but I don't have the equipment to irrigate it right just now. Um, so what I've done, just to keep the uh, humidity in these, in these um, logs, is put, um, put plastic over them. Um, just some pine tunnel plastic you got lying around, and I'll put a little bit of duct tape at the bottom. Um, if you live in a really dry climate, this would be quite important, um, because the dry climate will really dry those logs out quickly. Um, and we want to keep them nice and humid, so that mycelium can, um, can move through them. Um, alternatively, yeah, you can just put some uh, irrigation up and have a bit of water squirting over them once or twice a day. Hey guys, if you like what I'm doing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps me out knowing you guys are keen to see more. Um, obviously, I'm building a business growing mushrooms, and I'm uh, really keen to, 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 to film a lot of what I do and put it online. Um, something that really helped me out was the other guys who, who make the educational mushroom growing videos, um, and I've watched hours of them. So I'm uh, keen to, to obviously develop my own YouTube channel and sort of give back to that mushroom growing community. So yeah, hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get a notification every time I uh, make a video. I'm aiming to make one, possibly two per week. You don't need to stand here and watch me make this all good. Can I move your Hey? Can I move your no, we shouldn't auto track it now. Okay. <clears throat>